we, we've heard is deeply important to millions of black Americans who, after all, were not liberated from slavery 200 years ago and liberated by the civil rights movement uh, with federal legislation have not been gradually restored to what sh always should have been full civil rights in the United States. I mean, none of that has mattered up till they made a Marvel movie about a superhero who is black in a country filled with black people. That is the real, that's the change, right? Blade was not enough. Catwoman with Halle Berry, no. Okay, Wakanda is where it is. This is the most important moment in black American history. Not Martin Luther King, not Frederick Douglass, not the Civil War, not the end of Jim Crow, none of that. Not Brown versus Board. The most important thing is that Chadwick Boseman puts claws on his hands and a mask on his face and runs around jumping off cars in CGI fashion. Deeply, deeply important. Black children everywhere will now believe that they too can be superheroes who jump off cars in fictional countries. It's very important. Now, you may sense that I'm mocking a little bit. The reason I'm mocking a little bit is because I hate this kind of identity politics. I think it's incredibly stupid. I think it's incredibly stupid because, again, I grew up as an Orthodox Jewish kid where no American president has been Jewish. Right? No, no American president has been Orthodox Jew. And yet, I grew up on 1776, essentially worshiping the founding fathers, none of whom were Jewish. Right? And y yesterday, my, my daughter, actually, is on, on Shabbat. So my, I was sitting around with my daughter, and my daughter was talking about how, uh, she's talking about the presidents, because she's learning at the about the presidents in preschool. Uh, she's very politically active, my daughter. She's four years old, uh, and she knows many of the presidents. She is familiar with the life stories of Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. And she said, Daddy, was George Washington Jewish? And I said, no, he wasn't. And she said, uh, is Donald Trump Jewish? And I said, no, he's not. And she said, have any of the presidents been Jewish? And I said, no. And she said, why haven't any of the presidents been Jewish? And she's four, so I didn't go into the full explanation. But what I said is, you know, they, they just haven't been. But maybe there'll be a Jewish president in the future. Would you like to be president one day? She said, I don't know. It sounds boring. And so, which I think is, is a, an astute observation on the part of my daughter. But the point is this, right? If you're not telling your kids they can be anything in America, you're doing something wrong as a parent. And if you had to wait until Black Panther came out, right? We heard this about Barack Obama when he was elected too. Now that Obama's been president, black Americans will feel like they too can be president. It's a transformative moment. And yet all we hear now is that America is deeply racist and black people are still systematically, systemically discriminated against and that black people are still victims in American society. So it turned out it didn't mean anything. When Obama was president, we were told it meant everything. And then he was president for two terms, right? Reelected overwhelmingly. And then it turns out it didn't mean anything because we needed Chadwick Boseman to somehow make sure that black people felt accepted in American society because a bunch of white executives at Marvel greenlit a film about black people in a fictional country in Africa. And the insanity that has attended Black Panthers, it's crazy. I'll see the movie this weekend. I hope that it's good because I'm going to spend money on it. So anything I spend money on, I hope is good. Um, but um, you know, I will give you an honest review of that. I know that's been forbidden by the media. There's actually a law that you're not allowed to, to give your opinion on Black Panther. Emily Lakdawalla, I think, summarizes the, the feelings of a bunch of insane uh, leftist white social justice warriors. She tweeted this out yesterday, and it's totally crazy. She tweeted out, quote, So I carefully did not buy Black Panther tickets for opening weekend because I did not want to be the white person sucking black joy out of the theater. What's the appropriate date for me to buy tickets? Is next weekend okay? I think the appropriate thing for Emily Locke Dawala to do is never to leave her home again or tweet. I think these would be because, honestly, you never know when you're going to offend someone just by your very presence. Like the necklace that she's wearing here, I think it's ugly. And it's, it's ruining my white person joy today. Like, what kind of insanity is, what, kind, what does she think of black people? Like how, how derogatorily do you have to think of black people to think that if you're in a theater with a bunch of black people, they're gonna think that white person sitting here in a theater watching a movie, talking about how black people are awesome. That's ruining my black joy. First of all, what is black joy and why is black joy different from white joy or different from almond joy for that matter? I'm just, I'm confused. What, what, what are we even talking about here? But the sensitivity police have gone so far that we now have to have fully segregated theaters to make sure that black people are not offended by the presence of white people, according to Emily Lakdawalla. And we actually have to segregate the theaters. It's amazing. I mean, we could do the converse. We could do the, we did the converse for a couple hundred years in this country, right? The converse was black people won't be allowed into white people theaters because that will offend the white people and ruin their white joy. This is stupid, folks. This is not only stupid, it's counterproductive to the notion of a, of a good and honest and free American society. Okay, and then... Uh, the, the New York Times has run a series of pieces this week, these long think pieces about Ryan Coogler's film. Okay, so there, there are two that I spotted right off the bat. One by Salamisha Tillett. I don't know who Salamisha Tillett is. Uh, I, I guess Salamisha Tillett is, uh, well, I guess they didn't give this person's biography, so I don't know if this is a man or a woman. But the piece is called Black Panther Brings Hope, Hype, and Pride. Ah, oh, 
And here's what it says. It says, I suppose neither of us is used to the spotlight. A dapper T'Challa, the prince of Wakanda, says upon meeting Natasha Romanova, a.k.a. the Black Widow in Captain America Civil War. A few scenes later, a recently orphaned and vengeful T'Challa, swapping his bespoke blue suit for a full-body bulletproof one, reappears as a new Marvel movie superhero. The prince will have to live with the attention. Even before its February 16th release, Black Panther smashed box office records, beating out Captain America Civil War on first-day ticket advances and surpassing Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, to become Fandango's top-selling superhero movie in history. Great. Okay. That's fine. I mean, sure. I mean, I hope the movie's good. Um, but I do love this idea that, you know, this is this is some sort of amazing moment. Not since Spike Lee's Malcolm X has there been so much hype and, mo- and hope for a movie among African-American audiences. From special group outings planned by excited fans to crowdfunding campaigns to ensure children can see it, Black Panther is shaping up to be a phenomenon. In December, a viral video of two African-American men excited to see the movie's poster with its all-star black cast. This is what white people get to feel like all the time, one man wrote on Twitter, seemed to capture the anticipation, garnering more than 2.5 million views. Okay, a couple of things about this. One, Black Panther, the superhero, was created by two Jewish guys. And just FYI. Two, this is not what white people feel like all the time. White people don't go around thinking, oh, Captain America, my favorite white superhero. Oh, that's amazing. Iron Man, white superhero. And if you think like this, I would suggest that you might need to start thinking less tribally. If you spend your life going around thinking, oh, my God, I'll bet white people feel just like this every time they see Tom Cruise in a movie. First of all, do black people feel like that when they go see Denzel Washington in a movie? I doubt it. They black, oh, man, Denzel. Now I, now I know what it's like for white people who see Tom Cruise. I have never once gone to a Tom Cruise movie and thought, oh, look at that. That white guy, he's representing. That, that has never occurred to me, not one time, because that's crazy talk, and you shouldn't think like that. And so it was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Those were the two Jewish guys. And now Ta-Nehisi Coates has written a new series of comic books. By the way, Ta-Nehisi Coates' comic books are garbage. I've read them. They're so bad, the Black Panther comic books. So I hope the movie is much better than the comic books. But here's Deirdre Hallman. Listen to this. Wakanda is a kind of black utopia. This is the country where this takes place. Wakanda is a kind of black utopia in our fight against colonialism and imperial control of black land and black people by white people, said Deirdre Holman, a founder of the annual Black Comic Book Festival at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in Harlem. To the black imagination, that means everything. In a comic book, it is reality. And through a major motion picture, it's even more tangibly and artistically a reality we can explore for ourselves. There's so much power that's drawn from the notion there was a community, a nation that resisted colonization and infiltration and subjugation. So a few things about this. One, sorry to break it, folks. Wakanda is not a real place. It does not exist. It is just as real as Asgard. Okay, it does not. It's not. A, it's not a thing. Okay. Number two, this idea that it's a fight against colonialism and imperial control. Here is the reason why so many people are going crazy over this. So one of the reasons people are going crazy over this is that supposedly uh, the the Wakanda, the, the country of Wakanda in the movie. I haven't seen the movie yet, so this is speculation based on all of the news reports. The, the country of Wakanda has basically been separated from society for a long time. So it's sort of like 17th century imperial Japan. Right? It's been separated from the rest of the world for a long time. White people have not come in. There's been no trade with the outside world except through a vibranium, which I guess is some material, some alien material that landed there and is extraordinarily valuable and is used in, in weaponry like Captain America's shield. And they've been able to guard from the influences of outside culture. And therefore, according to the movie, Wakanda is the most technologically advanced country on planet Earth. It is incredibly advanced. Uh, It is filled with beautiful, wonderful people who all treat each other wonderfully. It is utopia. It is just the greatest place that ever was. And this is being portrayed as reality. The problem that I have with this is that there is no utopia for white people, for black people, for any people. It doesn't exist anywhere. There are two countries in Africa that technically have not been colonized. They're Ethiopia and Liberia. Okay, they, they were, uh, Ethiopia was conquered twice by the Italians, but was never colonized in the formal sense of colonies being placed there with Italian folks who then ruled the, the roost for a long period of time. Liberia was originally founded uh, by the United States, which granted sovereignty to the local black population. And the idea was that a lot of black slaves in America who had been shipped here against their will would be shipped back to Liberia. It was never really colonized in the, in the technical sense. Both of those places have severe problems. Countries have severe problems. And countries that are isolated have severe problems, too. Japan was isolated from Western civilization for, for centuries. That was not great for, for Japan. It wasn't great for China. This policy, North Korea, is, is completely isolated from different countries. The idea that trade, isolation, racial unity, that these are the things you should be aiming for in a country, is a really bizarre idea in a, in a liberal order, in a, in a new order where free movement of trade and population and money is, is considered a generally good thing and has bettered life all around the world. If you actually founded a country on the basis that it wouldn't trade with outsiders, that there wouldn't be any cultural exchanges, 
and that you would actually produce all you needed in-house, it wouldn't be utopia. It would be garbage. That'd be a bad country. And just because it's a country filled with black people, that wouldn't make the country any better. Now you have This was sort of the founding ideology of, of Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. This is the Yush ideology in, in North Korea. This is not a good ideology, and this is not a race-specific thing. I'm not saying Wakanda is bad because it's black or anything. That's stupid. I am saying that if your idea of a utopia is a place where there is no, quote-unquote, white influence, I, I'd like to see a place on the planet where that's a good thing. Right? I'm just, I, just as I think I'd like to see a place on the planet where a white-only country has been a good thing with no cross-cultural pollination. Right? That's, it's silly. The, the, the whole reason that cultures survive and thrive is because they adapt and advance thanks to technological advances they bring in from the outside. And yet this is being seen as sort of a model. And the problem is that if you're, if you're creating a racial separatist model, I haven't seen the movie yet, but if the, the worship of Wakanda seems to be this, right? If, if the worship of Wakanda is that a racial separatist model is good and that all of the evils that have been suffered by folks on the, Afri on the continent of Africa have been suffered because of colonialism and imperialism, that is historically inaccurate. There are a lot of reasons that countries in Africa have suffered tremendously over time. They were suffering tremendously, by the way, before, the, uh, before white folks ever got there. There's tremendous tribal antipathy. There was lots of tribal warfare. There were people selling each other into slavery. The, the idea of a utopia does not exist anywhere on earth. There is no utopia. The closest that we've come to utopia is a place like the United States where people of any race, any color, any background, any ethnicity can live in freedom together while respecting each other's civil rights. That's the closest we've gotten to utopia. And trying to build an alternative fictional utopia and then suggesting that we wish that this were a model for a country on planet Earth is silly and counterproductive. Okay, so there's my critique of Wakanda. Right, in the, here, here's what it says, by the way, in the New York Times article. Wakanda's rulers have wisely kept their homeland and its elemental riches hidden from the world. And in its isolation, the nation has grown wildly powerful and technologically advanced. There is no nation in human history that has become wildly powerful and technologically advanced simply through isolation.